In this video, we examine how the addition of a solute to a solvent changes the freezing point and the boiling point of the solvent at a quantitative way. Alright, so in a prior video, we have started looking at colligative properties, and those properties are ones that only depend on the amount of solute, not the type of solute. Now, when you have a solvent pure and add a solute to it, what we've seen is that uh, if the solute is non-volatile and non-freezing, the boiling point of the solvent goes up and the freezing point gets depressed. And we've been able to show that by just simply tracing how the chemical potential for the pure solvent changes when you add some solute. Right, so the goal of this video and the next video is going to be to try to see if we can come up with uh, analytic expressions for that change to the boiling and freezing points uh, of a solvent upon solution. Now, the derivation of these equations is a little long, so I have split this uh, derivation into two videos, and this is the first one. I recommend you to see uh, the next one uh, back to back. All right, so let's get started here. Now, this is what we're trying to uh, examine. Is this going to be an equilibrium between a solution phase where you have your solvent and a tiny little bit of solute B and then the gas phase where there is only solvent, right? That is uh, a condition for this to work, right? The, the solute has to be non-volatile, right? So uh, if, this is, if we are at equilibrium, then what happens is that the uh, chemical potential or the molar Gibbs energy of the solvent A in both the gas and the liquid phase, it has to be the same, right? So the way to write that is to say the chemical potential of uh, A in the gas phase has to be identical to the chemical potential of A in the liquid phase if you are at equilibrium. Okay, and uh, that's fine. That works uh, really reasonably well, or, or that is that is exact, exactly true. Now we just have to look at uh, what those chemical potentials really are. Now, notice that in the gas phase, there's only solvent, right? That solid is non-volatile. So you can uh, directly simply just write this as the chemical potential of the gas when pure, okay? Because there's only uh, a solvent. Now, in the liquid phase, though, you have a little bit of a contamination with B, but of course, all of our hard work with chemical potentials uh, has equipped us to write how the chemical potential in the liquid phase depends on the concentration. And what we have learned is that uh, this is simply, you have to add a correction here for the mole fraction of A, uh, and that a correction goes uh, to the chemical potential of the pure liquid. Okay, so this is what we are uh, faced with. That is the thermodynamic equilibrium condition. Now, if we solve for the natural log of the mole fraction of the, co uh, of the solvent, then we find that this is simply going to be the balance of the chemical potential of A in the gas phase minus uh, the liquid phase when pure, and then divide it over RT. All right. Now, if you stop to think about that term in the numerator there, that is simply the difference in the chemical potentials of the gas phase and the liquid phase for a pure substance, right? But those chemical potentials really are just molar Gibbs energies. So this is simply a change in molar Gibbs energy in a change of phase from the liquid, the initial phase, to the final phase, which is the gas. And that is simply just a change in the Gibbs energy in vaporization. That's what you're actually doing right here, right? Turn the liquid into the gas, if you think about it. Right? So that simply can be written as the change in uh, the molar Gibbs energy vaporization for the solvent, A divided over RT. Okay, so uh, that's something that, that we, can, we can work with. Now, the overall goal of, of these uh, next couple of videos is to find an analytic expression, a formula, for how the boiling point changes right, with concentration. Right, so notice that we have here concentration, and we have to see uh, how that affects the boiling point. So the way to do that from that expression is to simply examine the temperature dependence, right? So we have to take first derivatives of this expression with respect to T. All right, so let's proceed uh, slowly here. Again, our goal is to find uh, the first derivatives of this with respect to temperature 
And uh, we're going to apply the same uh, rationale here to uh, the right-hand side of the expression. Right, so it's the first derivative of the change in vaporization gives energy of solvent A divided over RT. Okay, very good. Um, now, uh, notice that this right-hand uh, side of the equation, uh, that R is a constant, so we can factor it out and simply write it as 1 over R right here. And then what we have right here should be familiar to you because that's exactly what we did when we derived the gibbs helmholtz equation. That allowed us to uh, find out how the ratio of the Gibbs energy of temperature changes with temperature. And that is exactly what we have here. Okay, so I recommend you to go back to that gibbs helmholtz equation to see what the result of this is. But I'm just simply going to write it here. So that's going to be 1 over r. And then this is minus uh, the enthalpy of vaporization for the pure solvent, molar, divided over t squared. Okay, that's uh, uh, that your Gibbs Helmholtz equation right there. Okay, great. So uh, this is something that is not difficult to to handle, right? Because we have here a vaporization enthalpy, and there's tables for them for solvents, right? So that's uh, something very comfortable. Now this is still a, a, a differential equation, and of course we want to have an integrated one that is going to allow us to actually punch in numbers conveniently. So really, the thing that we have to do here is simply integrate this expression, right? So we are going to first separate variables, okay? Which means that uh, I'm going to separate the natural log of the concentration in one side and then uh, the temperature on the other side, okay? Differential of T. And then we simply just have to integrate this, all right? So uh, that's that, great. Now let's discuss a little bit the limits of the integration. Uh, what we're trying to do is the following. We know what the boiling point of the pure solvent is. And then what we're trying to do is see how that boiling point changes when you change the concentration. Right, so our lower limit of the in integral then will be the pure solvent. Okay, so then uh, in, in terms of temperature, that boiling point is simply T sub B. Uh, we could write here T sub B star Okay, just to further specify that this is the pure solvent, but simply we're going to, we're going to write T sub B, and just know that that would be uh, the boiling point of the pure solvent. Now, in terms of concentration, when you have the pure solvent, your X sub A is 1, which means that the natural log uh, of 1 is 0. So your lower limit of the integral here will be 0. Okay? Great. And then we can integrate this until uh, any variation to the boiling point, so TV prime, that's what we're trying to calculate, what is the, the final boiling point when you add something to the solvent, and this could be any concentration, right? So we can write that there as a natural log of X bay. Okay, great. So this is what we uh, need to integrate here. All right, so now, um, let's uh, then continue to uh, integrate it. So on the left-hand side of the expression, that is gonna be fairly simple, this is your natural log of uh, x sub a. And on the right hand side of the expression, the first thing that I can do is simply factor out uh, this um, minus 1 over r, which I can write here. And then uh, notice that the vaporization enthalpy is also a constant. If the variation in the temperature is very small, and it will be quite small, so the change to these boiling points is going to be very, very small. It's going to be just a fraction. Uh, of a degree sometimes, or at most maybe one or two degrees. So that actually, you can assume that that's constant as well. So you can bring it out of that integral, and that is uh, the vaporization enthalpy right here for A. And then you simply have to integrate differential of T over T squared, but of course that is minus one over T. So that minus one over T is simply going to allow us to just change the sign of this minus right here and then uh, this is just going to be equal to uh, 1 over t evaluated from the end of the integral, which is t v prime, uh, and the lower limit of the integral, which is t v. Okay, so uh, this is kind of our final expression right here. So let me actually rewrite this lower limit uh, up there. Natural log of the uh, mole fraction of the solvent 
uh, is going to be equal to uh, this relationship of boiling points. And now this is this is something that uh, we could already use in problems, right? Because it, it gives you the uh, change in the boiling point, right? That is the boiling point when pure. That is the boiling point when you add something to the solvent. The new boiling point. That's are actually what we want to figure out. And we know this. That's just the vaporization enthalpy. And if you know how much solute you have added to the uh, so, so, uh, solvent, then you can calculate this as well. So again, this is an expression that works just fine to predict the final uh, boiling point of uh, solution. Now, uh, in the next video, we're, gonna, uh, we're going to uh, make this expression a little bit easier to use. Okay, so again, this works fine, but there's uh, further manipulation of this, which is going to give us an expression really, really, really easy to use, uh, as you're going to see.